Good morning. It's Tuesday morning. We're going to read Luke 9, 43b. That's how we refer to the pieces of verses. It starts in the middle of 43 through 45. So just a couple of verses, but important ones. While they were all marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand this saying, and it was concealed from them so that they might not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. So Jesus warns them, foretells his coming death. He's going to be delivered into the hands of men. And if the disciples don't get it, and in their memories it was hidden from them. They're concealed. They couldn't, they couldn't understand Jesus, and so they just they just went on and didn't ask him about it. Um, but he said, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. Um, if we just take a minute and think about that, it, Jesus is the Son of Man. That's that's the term that becomes a technical term for, for him. Um, and he's going to be given to the hands of men. Um, now, I'm looking at the Greek. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, parad okay, it's uh, the Greek word there is he's going to be handed over. You know, when Paul says, I, I handed over to you what was handed over to me that Jesus, when he was handed over to the authorities, um, he says all of that when he's talking about uh, the communion service in, what is it, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Um, the same word is used here. So Jesus, he, when he says he's about to be delivered, he's about to be handed over to um, the the authorities, and it's the um, it's the Romans who have the actual authority to put someone to death, and they do that in this case at the insistence of the Jewish leaders. Um, so it's not exactly fair to anyone to say, well, the Jews killed Jesus, because they didn't. The Romans did. The authorities did. He was, um, he was executed by the state. Uh, he was executed by those in power. Why did they do that? They were afraid of him, and they were jealous of the, of the reaction that he got from the crowds. He got the crowd of people to be uh, excited and um, to follow him, and they were afraid that he would lead some sort of revolution, that he would, that he would um, gather enough strength and then march on to Jerusalem and, and, and uh, take over the seats of power. Of course, Jesus didn't do that and wasn't about that kind of thing, but that's what they were scared of. And um, and the church has always had a, a tendency to do that. Um, of course, in the Middle Ages, the church was the common thing. You had your different governments, uh, kingdoms, but the church was the church everywhere. And so the church had a great deal of temporal power. And gradually, the church leaders realized that and began to use it to their own advantage. Um, there's one famous occasion, it's in the north of Italy, I uh, can't remember the year, but this king has displeased the Pope, and the Pope, he's taken the Pope prisoner and dragged him away from the Vatican way up into northern Italy, and so the Pope excommunicates the king, which basically means for the king and what they believed in those days, you're going to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. 
have a nice day. And and so the king <clears throat> crawls before the pope's castle in the snow every day for you know months, begging forgiveness. And finally, the pope comes out and says, "Well, I will let you back into the church, but only on these conditions." And you know, bang, 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 and 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 um, the the pope is freed and allowed to go home, and the king. Uh, repents of all these things he's done and, and changes his ways and changes the policies, changes um, the things, whatever it was that he had <coughs> he had conquered, whoever it was he'd conquered, <coughs> goes back on all of that and goes home and, and, and lives to tell the tale and take communion. I um, can't remember which pope that was. I think the place was called Canosa. Maybe if you Google Canosa, a famous pope, you'll get that story. But anyway, um, the church has had temporal power that it's exercised over the years. The church in this country has had a great deal of social power, cultural power, if you will. The, the Protestant American church has been able to kind of dictate what would happen and what wouldn't happen in our country for many, many years. Um, Catholics were looked on as sort of uh, second cousins who don't really get it. And, um, <clears throat> of course, there were no other religious traditions. There were some Jews, but okay. Uh, but there were very few others. And so this was basically a Protestant nation as an accident of where the immigrants came from. And the immigrants, they they dictated what was going to happen culturally. And so in a sense, they ruled. And some people want to go back to that these days. I don't think it's possible, but we'll leave that aside. So Jesus predicts his death. The disciples don't understand what he really means, and he knows that he's going to be handed over to the authorities, and they will kill him. Uh, he can see that coming. How much of his death he really understood or knew about in advance? Did he know exactly how he was going to die or when? I don't have any speculation on any of that, but... Um, but some people do, and I'm sure you can find that too on, uh, on your Google machines. So take that into consideration today. Think about what it means for Jesus to know that he's going toward his death and for his disciples not to know that. And, um, and have a nice day anyway, okay? See you tomorrow.